I've been a big fan of the One Marvelous Moment and the more recent One Excellent Scene playlist, as well as their creator, Nano V Movies, for quite a while. And can I just say that I think it's amazing that they single-handedly got X1 on Disney+. Plus. So when PlayStation put out his idea for a Kingdom Hearts version of these playlists with the One Key Moment, I knew I had to jump on it. So uh, thank you so much to PlayStation for putting this together. This will be so fun! I didn't think you'd come, Sora. <gasps> Good to see you again. Well, where are Donald and Goofy? Are they that important to you? More important than old friends? Instead of worrying about them, you should be asking about her. Kyrie! That's right. While you were off goofing around, I finally found her. Not so fast! No shenanigans aboard my vessel, boy. Riku, why are you siding with the Heartless? The Heartless obey me now, Sora. Now I have nothing to fear. So when thinking about one key moment from the KH series, I found myself being drawn to our dear Whittle Wiku. After chasing him through many worlds and bearing his antagonisms, we find him in this moment. One of the biggest in his descent into darkness. His feelings, being manipulated by Maleficent, inserting herself into his ear, driving that wedge between him and Sora ever wider, promoting her own dangerous dance with the darkness. Oh my god, does like every sentence in this paragraph I wrote end in darkness? At this point, we have seen the bad things that Riku is willing to do, and we know the hypocrisy of both Maleficent and Riku thinking that they are better at doing darkness than the other Disney villains that have fallen to it. Just because? So we know just how close he is to falling off that edge. We know how he has retreated into protecting Kairi, making sacrifices for Kairi. I'm thinking about Kairi. Why aren't you thinking about her? And me. And this perfect storm of cockiness, betrayal, and jealousy has left Riku bitter and susceptible to the worst this universe has to offer. This scene is the first instance of Sora being outwardly aggressive to Riku, doing so in probably the best line read in the entire series. You're stupid! And while this isn't the climax of their rivalry, this is the point of no return, where we know that that clash is now inevitable. And this amazing shot. You know what? Let's, let's sit on this shot for a second. It makes such good use of negative space, uh, showing just how distant Riku feels from anyone in this moment. And bisecting his face is so... Whenever a camera doesn't show a part of a person's face that is so important, he's not showing us all of what he has inside, and just from what we can see, it looks like we don't want to know the extent of the darkness he has. And it is such an awesome demonstration of just how unhinged Riku is here, and they do it in a way that is so beautifully cinematic, showing a kind of camera work that the series hasn't really had since. With the exception of the Reach and Memories directors learning about Dutch angles. Ah, a cinematographer doesn't have a one-to-one -one equal in video game production, and even then I feel like what would be considered a match might change based off the naming conventions of the individual product, so any one of these people could be responsible for the Dutch angles in Recom. I'm so sorry, that was so wordy. But luckily, it looks like they might be getting back into some cinematography with what they showed in the Melody of Memory trailer. And it's after you know about the framing of this shot do you figure out that... I have nothing to fear? He is lying. He has everything to fear. He could lose every single thing that matters in an instant. He believes if he doesn't keep fighting, he could lose Kairi's heart forever. But if he keeps pushing, Sora will only be an enemy from here on. And it is only here, after being taken advantage of one last time at his lowest point, there is one thing he cannot give up. 
Kyrie's safety. No! You won't use me for this! Let me back up a bit, because this gets glossed over a lot. Yes, Riku has a rivalry with Sora throughout the first game. Yes, a lot of his arc is directed at Sora. And yes, he is responsible for his own twisted curiosity and his feelings towards Kairi are mixed with a lot of bad ones. But there is never a point that he doesn't treat Kairi with the utmost devotion and tenderness. So it is not a surprise that when he sees her in danger, that is what he cannot stand for. Strength to protect what matters. Kairi is a guiding light for Riku, and it is not a coincidence that without her presence, Riku endures the worst days of his life. Worst day of your life so far. Kairi and Sora are his most important people, and for someone whose character motivation is literally laid out in the open, it makes all of the sense that even when he is in the most danger, their well-being takes priority. Take care of her. They are always on his mind. Oh, hey! Thank you so much for checking out this little video. Uh, it was such a wonderful idea for this series that means so much to so many people. Uh, thank you so much again to PlayStation for hosting it. Host, hosting it. Thank you for hosting it. You're doing so good. <coughs> if you decide to make a video yourself, please let him know to add it to uh, what will be a, an awesome playlist. And uh, and let let me know too. Um, I I want to see them all. <laughs> I, I don't think there will be a time limit. I mean, you know, you know, I'm sure I I took a while. Uh, so, yeah, you know, like just just keep the conversation going. You know, uh, maybe you could talk about how Kyrie was conscious throughout the entirety of Kingdom Hearts One. Nobody ever talks about that. What are her feelings about Riku falling to darkness? Uh, how much of you're stupid was was her frustration as well? You know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. 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 <laughs> okay.